Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's my privilege as the Minister of the Church here to welcome you um, to this latest of our lunchtime music recitals. It's been quite a while since we held one before, so thank you for coming today. Um, just to mention that whilst you're here in the church enjoying the music, we're also making it available um, through our Facebook group, and later on today, the concert will be available on YouTube if anyone wishes to revisit it. Um, so that's something we can make available to a wider audience and welcome to anyone who is sharing with us from afar. Before we come to today's event, just to mention one or two things that are happening within the life of the church as we begin to open ourselves up to the wider community. For those of you who haven't twigged it yet, um, every Saturday morning, from half past 10 till half past 12, we are running an outdoor cafe in the church garden at the West End. Um, we've had terrible weather every week, and yet still people have come. Apparently tomorrow it's going to be like the Mediterranean, so we're expecting the garden to be full. So please do come and enjoy a time together. It would be great to see you all. And these lunchtime recitals continue at the end of June, the last Friday in June, the pianist Elsa Cusido, Elsa's played for us before, Elsa will be coming to give us a piano recital and you'll all be very welcome to join us for that. We're sorry, we can't... It's, 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 do you, are you trying to get on the telly or something? It's fine. And would you like to put your mask on? Please. Sorry about that, folks. There will be a concert at the end of June, and you'll all be welcome. Sorry we can't provide refreshments at present. Um, hopefully that will change in the months ahead. Anyway, to calmer waters, because I really do know who is playing today, I'm delighted to welcome Mark Underwood. Mark was the director of music here at the church for quite a while. We were grateful for the service he rendered to us week by week and also various concerts. We're delighted that he finds time to come back and play for us when requested. So will you please give a very warm welcome to Mark Underwood. Good afternoon. Ah, now I've put this microphone on and turned it on and now I'm speaking at the microphone. So that's probably going to cause a huge glitch to the system, but uh, there we go. It's great to be here. How lovely to see you all, socially distanced, but still here. Um, as an organist, I've been socially distanced in many ways for years and years and years. So uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's not been an issue. Uh, but there we go. Well, it really is a delight, and thank you for organising the weather as well, which is doubly appreciated. I'm um, going to uh, play some, uh, some music for you. You'll be very, very glad to hear, hopefully. Uh, um, a programme which I hope you'll enjoy. Some uh, serious pieces and some not-so-serious pieces. Uh, I don't know whether you've got um, a list of what I'm going to play. That's fine. I, if, if some of you have, some of you haven't. I'll... Um, I'll talk about the pieces as we go. Uh, I will probably talk about them from up there using this microphone from now on, save the, you know, the exercise is good, but there we go. Uh, we're going to start with some Bach, good old JS, uh, the fugue in E flat major, which is, has been has sort of been given the nickname St. Anne Fugue because the, the main theme sounds a little bit like the theme tune, at uh, the theme tune, sounds a little bit like the hymn tune, St. Anne. Oh God, our help in ages past. Bach wouldn't have known that, but uh, it's very like it. Um, it's full of symbolism of three. Bach was a committed Christian, as I'm sure you know, and the symbolism of three crops up all over in his music, and this piece particularly, it's an E-flat, which is the key signature of three flats. The fugue is in three different sections. 
uh, and the, the number of bars in each section is a multiple of three. And there are all sorts of different threes in it. Uh, and the idea that as, as it goes is that it's representative of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, each section of the fugue, and it's very clear the different sections, is based on a slightly different subject. So a little different melody which comes in one part after another and you'll hear them come in. But each of the three sections seems to grow on the section before. But Bach being Bach and being a genius in every way manages to weave the St Anne theme into all the different sections. Um, the first is stately, the second is a bit more sprightly, and the third is very majestic, and it ends with a massive statement of the St. Anne tune in the pedals. So we'll start with the Bach. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll remember to turn this microphone off. I'm so going to get confused. <laughs> if you hear me deep breathing from the organ loft, you'll know I failed.
Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Bach in a good mood there, I think. Uh, we're going to play two uh, short, quieter pieces for you now. Uh, the first by Brahms. Uh, right at the very end of his life, he wrote uh, as his opus 122 uh, a series of 11 chorale preludes based on Lutheran hymn tunes. Brahms was not primarily known for his organ music, but actually his organ output is, is beautiful and, and incredibly well-crafted. Uh, the piece I'm going to play for you is the chorale prelude on Es ist ein Ross in Spuren, A Rose Breaks into Bloom, which is the Christmas uh, tune. Completely the wrong time of year, but hey. It's very quiet and it explores the eight-foot tones of the organ. So those are the the stops of the organ that are based at piano pitch. And there are some lovely little shades and contrasts of harmony uh, and, and texture of sound. And then after the Brahms, I'm going to play you a piece by Flor Peters. It's his aria, Opus 51. Uh, in that famous parlor game of uh, 10 famous, internationally famous Belgians, uh, Flor Peters comes in at roughly number 11, uh, but actually in the organ world he was uh, a, a really notable organist and composer. He was uh, director of music at the cathedral in Mechelen uh, and was a prominent figure in organ music in the 20th century. The aria is Flor Peters' own arrangement of the slow movement of his trumpet sonata. Uh, written in 1943 and uh, frankly to play it as a trumpeter you must have phenomenal breath control <laughs> because it's very the melody is very slow and sustained uh, I have pretty poor breath control uh, but that's okay because I'm going to use a, a sort of a trumpet stop uh, on the organ which you'll hear um, he calls actually this is slightly unusual in that he calls the solo tune to be soloed on an eight-foot stop and a 16-foot stop together. So the melody is in octaves, as it were, more or less all the way through. It's a rather nice colour. It's a very expressive, rather wistful melody, uh, which is played over slow, repeated chords in the accompaniment. The harmony is quite austere in its way. Um, I actually find it rather jazzy. It's sort of redolent of... Uh, of a sort of a dark and smoke-filled room, perhaps. But anyway, see what you think. So we start with the Brahms and then Flor Peter's aria.
Thank you. So we move on to uh, the largest piece in the, uh, in the recital, which is actually a collection of four pieces. This is the Suite Gothique by Léon Boilman, who is uh, an Alsatian uh, who uh, lived and worked in Paris for the majority of his life uh, as an organist uh, and composer at uh, the Church of Saint Vincent de Paul. Uh, his number of, you know, his output was very small, uh, but very notable again in the uh, in the world of organ music, the Suite Gothique is his most famous piece, and it's a staple of the organ repertory. It's in four movements, uh, all of which are Gothic in the same way that St Pancras Station is Gothic. You know, it's um, it's it's that sort of idea, but they're they're sort of very dramatic and uh, and playful in their way. Uh, it starts with an introduction, which is big block chords, very arresting like a big Gothic cathedral sort of scene right from the bottom. And that's followed by a minuet, which is in a very lively three time, so feel free not to dance uh, because we're uh, under COVID rules still, but there we go. Uh, that's followed by a prière, a prayer, uh, which is, some say a little bit saccharine, a little bit sweet in its, uh, in its makeup, but actually it's very beautiful. And it never gets above very quiet. Um, and then that's followed by probably the most famous movement of the lot, which is the Toccata, which is dramatic and scary. If you have an audience full of young people, they all run around going, ooh, like that. Uh, please don't do that. Uh, it will kind of put me off. Uh, but it's, um, it's a very haunting theme. It's a typical French Toccata for the organ, in the sense that you have very quick... Uh, notes in the hands and a, and a long, rather more uh, sort of elongated theme in the pedals, which in this instance has a very sort of haunting effect. Um, it finishes in a, in a blaze of full organ, uh, rather as if it's going to sort of set the Gothic architecture alight. You know. uh, enjoy it, it's a wonderful piece. I love to play it. I hope you enjoy listening to it. Leon Boilmont, Sweet Gothic.
Thank you very much. Uh, so, the final two pieces of this lunchtime concert before you can all go home and have your lunch. Uh, unless you've had it before, you can go home and have a cup of tea. You can have whatever you like, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not here to criticise. Um, we're going to finish with two uh, pieces, one by um, Craig Lang, C.S. Lang, who is a New Zealand-born British uh, organist. He was director of music at Christ Hospital School in Horsham. And I'm going to play for you his tuba tune, which is his most popular work. I'm sure I've played it here before loads of times, uh, but it's just such a charming piece. It's a sort of dashing little tune. Uh, which almost sounds a little bit sort of Handelian, a little bit like it was by Handel at the start, but some of the harmonies that creep in halfway through couldn't be anything other than 20th century. Uh, not in a, a nasty way or a, a clashing way, but just you, you'll see what I mean. Um, there is no tuba on the organ here, uh, which does not present a, a particular problem, but uh, we're gonna, I'm going to use the, the big trumpet stop on the great division, which is the, uh, the, the, the keyboard in the middle. Uh, and there's a big trumpet stop, which is somewhere up there in the, uh, in, in the gallery. And with a few other stops combined, sort of gives, it, gives the melody a nice sort of fat, reedy sound. Uh, so that's the C.S. Lang tuba tune. And then to, uh, to finish the concert, uh, I'm going to play a piece uh, simply titled Sorti, uh, Exit, in E flat. The E-flat in this case is not as important as in the bark, it's not symbolic, although it nicely rounds off the uh, top and tails of the, uh, the recital. Uh, by the French organist and composer Louis-James Alfred Le Fébure Veille. Uh, now he was as flamboyant as his name might suggest. He was a contemporary of César Franck, so he was mid-19th century Paris. Uh, he was uh, good buddies with Aristide Cavalier Cole, who built a big French symphonic organs. And Louis James Alfred Le Fébure Vigny used those big symphonic organs to their greatest possible effect. He was a brilliant organist and a brilliant improviser. And uh, occasionally he would get into trouble at his church, which was uh, La Madeleine in Paris. He was director of music and organist there prior to Camille Saint-Saëns. Uh, he got into trouble because some of his playing was not necessarily the most reverent. And occasionally he was told to compose in a more serious style. However, he knew what his public liked. And so he composed pieces like uh, this sortie, which I shall play for you, um, which uh, in a church I used to play at many years ago, the kids used to call it the fairground piece. So I'll leave you to imagine what that's going to be like. So I'll play the C.S. Lang tuba tune, followed by the Sorti in E-flat by Louis James Alfred Lefebvre Vigny. Remember the name.
just want to thank Mark for coming back. It's such a delight to see you. Thank you very much. I can see why those children call it the fairground piece. It's huge fun. Thank you very much indeed.